you for watching. Yeah. board meeting called to order. Roll call, please. Councilman Gann. Here. Councilman McBride. Here. Councilman Harrell. Councilman Stamey. Councilman Hatmaker. Here. Councilman Fair. Here. Mayor Burton. Here. Do I hear a, a motion for uh, the review and approval of minutes of the previous meeting dated August 23rd, 2021? So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Um, under new business, Request for Mr. Patel at 122 East Division Road, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, that's his address, for the Eagle Smoke Shop located at 11112 um, North Charles G. Sievers Boulevard uh, for a Class B off-premise beer permit. Is there anyone here to represent the Patels? Can you come to the podium, please? The podium? Um, is this the old Pizza Hut building? Yes. And what will you be serving and, and providing there at that location? So what do you need, sir? What will you, what will you be providing there at that location? You're going to sell beer and, and is it like a vape shop or well, we're smoke? We're going to have a vape smoke shop plus uh, we're going to sell the beer. So we are building a new beer cave and a beer, a walking beer. Do you have any other smoke shops in the yes. area? What not, in, not in Oak Ridge, uh, not in uh, Clinton West. We have it here, uh -huh. across the street uh, from uh, next to the Little Caesars. Street from that, uh, the we closed that store like you know like two years ago. Okay. So we bought the property across the street. Okay. What what process do you take when you sell someone alcohol? We check the ID first. Okay. Always. And we check make that. sure like you know like he's not under the age and plus if he's. If he's like you know, kind of like drunk or something, uh -huh. we don't we c we don't sell it. Okay. If you ever we always ask them. I mean, if we have a doubt or something, we always ask the customer, "Can you please walk a little bit? If he walk like straight, then he's okay. Okay. And if we get the smell, then we don't sell it. Okay. Have you ever been cited before for selling to anybody nope. underage? Nope. Never okay. got ticket. Nothing. Okay. In the last twelve years. Any questions from council? Well, I always say this to everyone. Um, first offense, if you sell to a minor, it's going to be $1,500. Oh, yeah, it's fine. And it's, yeah. I mean, we, we take that very seriously. So please continue to do what you're doing if, if you never sold to a minor before. Yes, I have but, been um, here for like 12 years, so I know what you're okay. doing. All right. Any other questions? A motion to approve? Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you and welcome to Clinton. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Beer board uh, meeting adjourned. Opening up the, the regular agenda. Roll call, please. Councilman Gann. Here. Councilman McBride. Here. Councilman Harrell. Councilman Stamey. Councilman Hatmaker. Here. Councilman Fair. Here. Mayor Burton. Here. Do I hear a motion for the approval of the agenda? We would approve the agendas. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. The prayer this um, late afternoon will be given by Mr. McBride. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings and your protection. And dear God, I pray now that you be with us during this meeting. I pray that what we do will be pleasing to you. I pray that you give us the necessary wisdom that we need to make good decisions for the city. Thank you for our city, its employees and their families and what they do each and every day. And God, I pray for the folks this evening in Ukraine and for that country as they battle and fight for what they're uh, fighting for. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God,
Thanks, Jim. <clears throat> Do I hear a motion for the review and approval of minutes of the previous meeting dated January 24th, 2022? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. At this time, we'll be recognizing any visitors and citizens with um, grievances or praises. We'll take the praises first. I'm joking, David. <laughs> you might have a praise. I don't know. I, I have both. <laughs> and the grievance, I don't believe, is so much with the council uh, or even with any part of the city except that to the extent the city hasn't really uh, been able to enforce its ordinance so far. I'm here on behalf of Mr. Worthington and his wife, Ann. They live next door to Clinton High School. And the problem is that the schools have gone without a permit of any kind and built a softball practice, or I don't know if it's a practice or a game field, but a softball field, and uh, the lighting is a nuisance and a violation of every, we don't have specific lighting standards, but there's a set of model standards. It, it extremely uh, violates those, and it's really discouraging because it started out with a visit to the Worthington's home uh, from uh, the person who said, here's a draw. This is what we're planning to do. We want to be good neighbors. Uh, and we, you know, we want to get along with everybody. And so they eventually started construction. And when they first demolished the building to proceed with the construction, the Worthington's were again assured that they were building it the way it had been depicted at the beginning, except that they might leave off the bleachers and they wouldn't need a retaining wall. Well, instead, once it became apparent what was being done, they rotated the field uh, about 180 degrees from the way it was depicted in the drawing. And uh, they installed some very bright LED lights that just shine on their house. And he's got a letter, a couple of letters he'd like to hand out to you all. If, if you oh, they got them already? Okay. So anyway, our thought is that the schools, like anybody, are supposed to obey the law. And they should have gone and gotten a permit before they did this. They should have turned in a, a site plan and a drawing. And uh, they didn't do that. And so we're asking the city to please enforce your law. And as I understand it, that would require somebody, the building official, to go out and put a stop work order on it and tell them they have to stop until they get uh, <coughs> something approved. And I hope that if they apply to approve what they built without a permit that is destroying their property value and peace of mind, that that will not be something that would be considered for approval. There have been a lot of things. It's just been really bad, the misrepresentations that have been made. Last night, the lights came on at about 8.30, was it, or 7.30? 8.15. Okay, they came on. They stayed on until the school superintendent came out and pulled the meter around 10.30. And they had been told, well, we're going to padlock those lights so they can't be turned on. And they were padlocked, but then they found out they can be turned on remotely by a computer. So we don't know why somebody turned those lights on last night. Uh, but what you might want to do, David has asked me to extend this invitation to you, if you would, and I was surprised when I went out there and saw how bad it was when the lights were on. He had described it to me. And you can stand there in the daytime and look at the poles and the lights and imagine it might be a problem. But until you're there in the dark and they're on, you just can't imagine what it does to their house. It's just like it illuminates everything on that side, the back, and the front of their property. I think the only area of shadow would be on the opposite end. And it's all by phone call. It creates a hazardous condition at the intersection of Laurel Road and Hillcrest. <coughs> it, it creates a glaring blindness toward vehicles coming onto Hillcrest, I believe, from Laurel mm -hmm. Road. So um, we, we hope that you can encourage your officials to do that. We know that they are their own managers, so to speak, but I'm sure that they put a lot of stock in what the council would like to see done. And if you want to come out and see it, he's willing to host you anytime. 
and he would welcome your presence there if you're curious about what the real effect of this is. I think, I think most, if not all of us, have been briefed by Roger on this, and I talked to David before the meeting that we understand and we have to let the due process take place. I don't know if it even comes before us. It'll probably go through planning commission mm -hmm. for yes, that. Yes. John, uh, House Order met with Dr. Parrott today. I uh -huh. don't know the outcome of that meeting. I know John was going to explain everything that they needed to do before they could move forward on, on this at this point. And we'll have to go before planning commission because there is uh, some provisions in Chapter 6 of the um, our, our um, ordinance book that'll cover this and they will have to make some necessary changes to prevent the lighting pollution over on Mr. Worthington's property and any other property. Yeah, I, I, I think our goal is again, just like I said earlier, that for y'all, for everybody to have the, the best possible outcome in the situation. So has there actually been a stop work order issued? I'm does not there, does sure of that, but does I'm there more or less, I think, think there has been to the, mm -hmm. the right permits are, are mm -hmm. obtained. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you did you say you believe there has been one done? I don't know if there's official been an official stop work order done, but I think it's the understanding they can't move forward until they get get the correct permits. Okay. I wouldn't trust them if I were yeah. you. And like I said, I haven't <coughs> talked to John. He he met with them late this afternoon. I have not yeah. spoke with him since right. the meeting, so that's why I, I couldn't say 100% exactly what he told me. Even okay. if we have a stop work order, is that going to prevent the lights from coming on? At well, I think that's why Dr. Parrott pulled the breaker. He, t he okay. called me last night and told me the same thing, that he would actually went down there himself and took the breaker out driver. to prevent them from coming on again. Okay. okay. One of the things that I included in uh, the packet that I handed out uh, or gave to each of you is a uh, athletic uh, design standard for athletic field uh, lighting. There are several of those that have been done across the country. Seattle Parks and Recreation has done one of the best ones that I looked at. They went ahead and um, set standards uh, using the Illumination Engineering Society of North America, which is uh, the, uh, the nationally uh, recognized experts on this. And our code is a little bit vague. It just says that if the lights bother uh, a, uh, someone in the neighborhood, but I would uh, request that city council instruct planning commission to put some uh, specific values in there uh, to protect the property owner for Clinton. Any questions for David? Was this, uh, Mr. Worthy, was this the uh, original? That's the original plans that were presented to me. They were presented to me in uh, 2019. The date that that drawing was created was April of 2018. And uh, <coughs> Mr. Parrott, from the first time that we met, said that, uh, said also uh, we'll be putting up vegetation and stuff to uh, create, uh, to help stop any uh, uh, any problem between us. They had known that they wanted to do this project for the last four years, 47 months according to that paper. If uh, he mentioned the other day about putting up uh, vegetation after the project was completed, I'm 68 years old. If they put up even fast growing trees, and they don't create, uh, don't have the problem cr uh, stopped as far as light trespassing before the trees go up. Uh, it's probably going to be a quarter to half of the, my remaining life before the trees get to a height uh, that they take care of it. And um, I want any any problem with uh, light <coughs> trespassing. Uh, eliminated from the time that they flipped the switch the first time. And I think that's reasonable. Yep. Message received. And, and staff is working on it. And I know that the the, the, the March planning commission meetings a week earlier, so they probably won't be able to see this hear this till April. Unless you do a special call meeting at the okay. uh, planning commission. 
And just FYI, the county had already approached us about using Lakefront Park again this year, so Clinton High School will be playing at Lakefront, and we're working with them on that, so it's not, it's not crucial that this project be done within the next few weeks. Okay, all right. And also, I would like to request, since we have an advantage in this that we don't have, uh, where I spent eight years on the planning commission, I know a little bit about how it works, and most times when somebody comes in, like uh, the uh, Food City or somebody, uh, and they present you with a set of drawings, you've got to take their word on it that the results of those drawings are going to match what happens. They have went ahead and put up the lights without your permission. So I'm asking for them to, uh, to correct their light problem, which they already exist, the power's already on them, and uh, there's no reason why they can't prove to us that, uh, that the lighting uh, will, will meet the city standards before they proceed with this project. All right. Thank you, David. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anyone else? This time, um, communications from the mayor. I did have one thing. I'm getting very excited this time of year. March 13th, daylight savings time. <laughs> so you can move the clock. Just 13 more days. Or less than, it's like, yeah, it's like 13 more days. So hang in there. Spring is coming. Also, I um, have a presentation to give. Archie, you mind meeting me at the podium? Any of the firemen, if you'd like to, or anybody that's worked with Archie, if you'd like to, at least, if you just want to stand up or come, come and kind of circle around them. <laughs> Need anything from us? Or if y'all, do y'all mind just come down too? I don't think there's enough room. <laughs> Somebody take there's some photos. I hope there's another fire somewhere. Scott, Scott, come up here. here. Use this microphone to face, face the floor. Yeah, you want to do that? Okay. Face, face out that way. can pick up some of this but this plaque goes to Chief Archie Brumman he's been employed since March 1st 1978 to March 4th 2022 for a total of 44 years and four days today we honor your incredible service and dedication to protecting lives you leave behind an inspiring legacy that you can <coughs> be proud of congratulations on a truly deserved retirement you have given your all in the service to the citizens of the, of the city of Clinton. It's your time to rest and relax. Thank you, Chief Brummett, March 4th, 2022. <laughs> and I want to say as a friend and also as a mayor, thank you for everything you've done. And we love you. Thank you. Yeah. Now we, we deserve about four or five minutes. You can go to the podium. <laughs> Thank you all. Make sure. I said it is for to have these guys here. It's a, it's a team gathering. He, he is the uh, team pack.
Y'all didn't know it. Steve Paxton volunteered 44 years old. So I'm sorry about that, guys. I was going to ask how many of those guys are 44 years old. I bet there's not too many. Um, committee reports, city school board report, Kelly Johnson. Good evening. Archie, congratulations from Clinton City Schools. We are just, from the moment I became director, you became one of my best friends. And for those of you who do not know, when there is inclement weather, the first couple of times, I got up at 4 o'clock in the morning and I went running roads. Then I figured out Archie was already out at 4 o'clock <laughs> in the morning, so why should I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning when he is already out? So Archie has been our official behind-the-scenes Clinton City Schools road checker on inclement weather days. So when it's not been called out, it's his fault? It's all his fault. Wow. <laughs> it is all his fault. Oh. <laughs> In fact, when it flooded this past week, I got one parent that was questioning why we were going, and he was the first person I called. I was like, I'm not seeing any flooding. Am I missing something? And so Jeff Little has voluntarily agreed to take over this position when Archie has retired. He said even what though he's not a morning that? person, <laughs> that he will willingly get up at 4 o'clock in the morning for Clinton City Schools. You may want to get that on paper. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Archie has been, the fire department is, uh, fire and police are both dear friends to Clinton City Schools, but Archie, is, he holds a special place in our hearts. So Archie, congratulations and thank you for all that you have done for Clinton City Schools. Just two quick Clinton City updates as we've got a lot going on tonight. I um, wanted to let you know that we did receive a um, honor from the Tennessee Department of Education since the last time that we met that Clinton City Schools was designated as what is called a best for all district. There were about 60-something, if I'm not mistaken, districts across the state that were given this designation by the Department of Education. We received that designation because we joined as part of the ESSER funding. We are participating in a high-dosage, low-ratio tutoring program called All Core. And then we also have committed, we spent 50% or more of our funds on student learning loss of our ESSER. Um, actually, we spent 100% of our ESSER 3.0 funds on student learning loss and acceleration. So uh, we have a nice banner in central office, but we were recognized as being a best for all district. And then second, wanted to let you know that the big topic in education right now is Governor Lee's new funding model for schools funding. Um, we did receive the estimate of what that would look like if that passes General Assembly in this session. That will not go into effect until FY24, so we will be funded by the BEP model for next year, regardless of how all this plays out. Um, the governor has stated that he's putting $1 billion into Tennessee public education. Um, as Scott and I have spent quite a bit of time unpacking what that estimate would look like for Clinton City Schools. It looks like that we would be receiving about a 6 to 7% increase. Um, the way that they are working it is they would be giving a student base of $6,860 for every child that is enrolled in Clinton City Schools. And then there would be certain percentage weights depending on if that child is economically disadvantaged, if they live in a concentrated poverty area, if they have some sort of unique learning needs like special education or ELL. There are certain weights and then there is a direct funding component for K through three knowing that um, our elementary kiddos are a little bit more expensive to um, educate. So um, in comparison, when you look at a uh, Anderson County Schools, Oak Ridge City Schools, they got about a 13% increase. That was because Lee has put so much focus on CTE and the high schools. So we missed out on that pot of funding just because Clinton City Schools doesn't have a high school. But um, so that's where we stand with that. It still is at the beginning stages. The bill was just released yesterday, already has an amendment on it. And so it will have to work its way through General Assembly before that becomes law. So we're just watching to see how that unfolds. So any questions for me? 
Any questions for Kelly? Kelly, how's COVID, COVID still sticking around? We're or done. You're good? We're done. You're officially, I've officially you're done. said we're done. Okay. <laughs> There's no more COVID in Clinton City Schools. No, we're doing very, very well. Um, the uh, Department of Health has issued guidance that we no longer <coughs> have to contact trace in the school setting. And so uh, we have ceased contact tracing. And honestly, our numbers right now, we're not being impacted very, very slightly by COVID at this point, which we're very, very thankful. Great, great. Thank you. You don't have an amendment, do you? Huh? You don't have an amendment, do you? You are spared of Scott Ray tonight. No amendment. We'll get you next month. Happy day. <laughs> Spring right around the corner. No Scott. It's a good day. You get, you get us next week. You get us next month. Um, Clinton Regional Planning Commission report. Councilman Gann. The uh, Clinton Regional Planning Commission met on uh, Monday, February 14th. Uh, new business applicant John and Sandra Stair requesting side setback variance from 15, 15 feet to 6 feet for the property located at three, uh, 205 Walnut Street. This is for an expansion for a garage and concrete pad leading up to it, and uh, that, was, that was approved. Uh, also, uh, Isaiah 17 requesting administrative review for proposed, proposed use of property located at Woodland Drive. This is for a single family dwelling to be utilized as an approximate six to 12 hour short term foster care facility. And uh, this is currently just, had, the house hadn't even been built. But uh, after discussing with them, they do plan to, to build it, occupy it as a, basically a, a family residence uh, on a short term basis for uh, children that DHS is dealing with, and that was uh, uh, approval, uh, not necessarily approval, but uh, acceptance was given by the by the uh, BZA uh, because they were just simply asking for an administrative review. Uh, this is on the down down near uh, River River Bend on the end of Woodland. Um, I think they already have a facility here in Clinton that they're talking about moving, don't they? Don't have no. one. Okay, I thought they were looking at one up at the other end of town. End of town. Then the uh, Clinton Regional Planning Commission applicant professional land systems requesting final plat review for property located at 375 J.D. Yarnell Industrial Parkway. This was simply a redivision of properties that were that connected between J.D. J.D. Yarnell Parkway and uh, uh, Eagle Bend extension there uh, and it's simply moving a property line for uh, for the benefit and that was approved then applicant crossland services requesting final plat review for property located at 218 Kevin way this property is zoned R1 and uh, this also was a again a uh, redivision of property and after discussing about some of the things that need to be cleared up as far as signatures and such it was also approved an applicant uh, Joseph Smith requesting final plat review for property located at 619 Woodland Drive property is owned R1 uh, this was in uh, in preparation this potential land uh, transfer there and uh, to make things a little bit easier for Mr. Smith uh, in extension of the property line there while he had the opportunity to do so. There's a little bit of a slope and this would take care of it. And that was approved also. An applicant, Jane Holt, requesting site plan review for property located at 331 Sunset Road. Property is zoned R1. This is the uh, originally it was a PUD, I think, and, and uh, they've decided to, to change the uh, uh, configuration of it. Uh, and we're given uh, pre at least preliminary uh, site plan <laughs> review p uh, <coughs> approval for the, uh, for the beginning of that. <coughs> uh, and then lastly, Jeremy Webb requesting site plan review for property located at Highway Drive, property is zone B2. This is a property for, that he will use uh, uh, right now probably more for storage of his equipment, maybe later on or probably later on for a uh, office space uh, pretty much across the street from uh, South Clinton School. 
but that will be uh, that will be kind of a storage lot for him. There was some discussion about uh, trying to screen that from the highway. Uh, that's an impossible task because it's about a 20 foot drop mm -hmm. off the highway down to his <laughs> property, and uh, I don't think there's a tree around yet that's going to be available to screen that for a while. Uh, but that's that's all I have. Any questions? Any questions for Council McGann? Thanks, Larry. Clinton, Utilities Board Report. Uh, Mr. Bear? CUB met this month, and it was a um, normal meeting. Note, we didn't have any uh, public participation, and um, all's well, and financials are doing well, and uh, uh, that's my report. If you have any questions. Any questions for Zach? <coughs> Thanks, Zach. Um, Larry, did you have anything under other committee reports? I can't think of anything right now for Green McAdoo other than it is staying active. Uh, the parcels are parcels are being finished or are being still in the process, but uh, it is it is still an ongoing active place, very very much involved. I've heard nothing but good good yeah. things from the new person. He might be he's really not new anymore. He's been there for over no. a year, hasn't he? Well, he had. I think he had two stand-up comedians there Saturday night for free. I don't know what their attendance was, but yeah. he, I mean, he's got activities going all the time. He does. He does. Um, Catherine, you had something? I do. <laughs> Good evening. I just wanted to give you guys some updates on historic downtown Clinton. Um, first of all, um, next week I'm going to be doing some training for to make us a smart start community. Um, this Laura Todd reached out from me to me um, from PNECD and um, Smart Start communities gain resources and tools for small businesses and entrepreneurs. Um, so um, that's something that I'm going to get our community started with. Um, March 22nd, I'm very excited to announce that we are going to be starting a food truck event that will happen every Tuesday um, in the parking lot of Commerce Street. Um, we'll have four food trucks there every Tuesday from 4 to 7 p.m. And this is an event that we're doing with the Chef's Workshop. Um, they are also, they also have um, some nights planned for our police and firefighters and even our teacher nights um, where um, if it's a teacher night, teachers and their families can come and eat for free. So um, we're very excited that they want to come to Clinton and um, bring <coughs> some food and community. So they set up um, the four food trucks. They bring their own barricades. They bring tables and chairs and tents and lights. And um, it, I, th I just think it's going to be a great opportunity for our community to have some fellowship out there. So um, April 9th is our mosaic event. And I'm really excited to be partnering with the schools again this year um, for that. Um, and we um, got an official word that the, we're going to be a part of the Dogwood Arts Festival with that event this year as well. So um, I'm really excited to have the promotion of that from all over Tennessee um, to highlight our, um, some of our artists in the area, our schools, and all the beautiful art that they create. Um, we're going to have performances, lots of kid-friendly activities, lots of food, um, some fine art vendors. We're going to create an artist alley so you can walk around and watch artists at work. Um, and that is going to be on Saturday, April 9th. But on Friday, Clinton City Schools is going to have their art show in the park the night before. And then on April 7th and 8th at the Kincaid House, Anderson County Schools will also have their art displayed. So lots of art for that weekend so that we're very excited about. Um, our board has also contributed funds to do a street cleanup day on April 28th. That means we're going to be planting all sorts of flowers and possibly doing some window cleanings and some other things to get ready for our antique festival, which really highlights our community on May 6th and 7th. Um, we are working with some of the business in the, <coughs> in the downtown area on the facade grant. We're accepting applications for that um, until March 7th, and then that will go to the state in May. Um, 
and we are nearing completion on our walking tour. So we've got a lot going on, um, but I just also um, want to say that we do have our 501c3 status now, and we created the Pearl Foundation, um, and that stands for Preserva Preservation, Education, Arts, Revitalization, and Leadership. So. Um, I think one of the things I'm most proud of is that we have um, lots of different groups and communities, not just in historic downtown Clinton, but all over Clinton that are coming to us and asking how we can help them. Um, our board is made of people who love the historic area, but they also love all of Clinton and all of those parts work together. So we have been doing some meetings in the South Clinton area. Um, we've been meeting over at Jim McBride. Um, which Joey Smith likes to dub the Midtown area. Um, Clinton High School has gotten involved in our community, so I just want you to know that we are um, we are taking great pride in our community as a whole, not just the historic downtown area. Right. Any questions for Catherine? Like I said before, you're doing a great job. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> General government report, Mr. Hauk. Thank you, Mayor. Bids for the new traffic signal on North Seavers Boulevard at Doe Run Boulevard and at Hillvale Road at Tanner Lane were received on February week 22nd. After review, I recommend awarding the bid to the lower bidder, Progression Electric, in the total amount of $479,995, which includes a base bid and an ad alternate for a battery backup system. Final funding for this project will be determined after confirmation of the Anderson County contribution to the project since these two signals will benefit the county's residents in Hunter's Trail subdivision and the Hillville Road area, the base bid was approximately $445,000. Hear, hear a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? So the county has been contacted and it's in your discussion with the county mayor being the county. Yes, we've been in so discussion. The bids just came in extremely high than yeah. what we anticipated. So we were. But our hopes and intent is that they offset some of the yes. costs of this. And, and I'm pretty sure they will. We've, I've met with a couple of the commissioners up there. We've okay. had them doing talks. They just, we were expecting more like 350 but okay. it's just the cost of everything is right. high right now. And and once something like this is given the green light, fall maybe, I mean, things the like this don't, doesn't happen. I, and that's probably got to do with supply chain stuff too maybe. Yeah. Or, Sometime this year? Yes. Oh, okay. How long did it take to get the poles in there at the interstate? The off ramp. Uh, it was a while. But we won't lock the price in the before it goes up even more. Right. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Mr. Mayor. We've received the final rule from the U.S. Department of Treasury, which allows the recipients of the coronavirus state and local physical recovery funds to use lost revenues for qualified government services. We propose to use a portion of these funds to provide employee pay bonuses. After significant review and discussion, we have developed a plan to provide for employee bonuses based on service time, risk factor, and sal salary levels. Based on this plan, we request council's approval to, of the plan to provide employee bonuses, including taxes and retirement benefits. In a, an approximate estimate of amount of $300,000. This will be for every every full-time employee in the city except myself, the finance director, and the four department heads. Motion for approval. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Well, I said in, in private, and I'm going to say in public, <coughs> I think this is awesome that this is happening, but I think it also speaks greatly to the leadership of the, of the city. Uh, a lot of cities those people that were exempted, those six people you talked about, those salaries are higher usually, and those folks would have benefited from this too. And I, I compliment you and your senior staff, Roger, for recognizing the fact that, you know, it goes to the folks who are out here. Not that you guys don't do a, I don't know really how to say that. Uh, I don't want to be offensive, but to the folks out here actually working day in and day out. And you guys, I think, in leadership are very unique because when I read the newspapers and I hear the news uh, outlets, I don't think a lot of senior staff from other cities and counties would have exempted themselves like you all have done. So 
I commend you in your leadership on that. Anyone else? I think what Jim says it pretty much echoes everything that, mm -hmm. that, that the council feels. And, yep, well yeah. said. And um, I would agree. Certainly appreciate staff and, and employees. And I know this has been a tough two years looking back. I think probably everybody on, that's been out pu public facing has probably gotten COVID at least once. Yeah. And um, that's, that's quite a sacrifice. So I certainly appreciate it. Um, time frame wise on this, let's. We talked about probably sometime in April, uh, paying it out. Okay. And, and like I said, it's based, uh, we probably already did the, the calculations on it, but I thought uh, we've got it approved tonight. Give us March to, to check our numbers and pay it eight, like I said, April, do some good vacation money. Okay, good, good. Anything else? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Thank you, Mayor. Public Works Department. Public Works Department needs to purchase two single axle dump trucks to replace a 25-year-old and a 37-year-old model trucks currently in use. The, new, the two new dump trucks are available for purchase on state contract price. Because of the industry-wide production schedule, we need to commit to purchase these trucks now for anticipated 2023 delivery. We therefore request authorization to purchase the two trucks, 2023 Kenworth dump trucks for, from Worldwide Equipment Enterprise at a total cost of $265,444. Hear a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? I want to say something here as well. Uh, from the public works, and I know all the departments do this too, I mean, the ladder truck, how old was it when we replaced it? So it's not just public works, but to have a 37 <coughs> and a 25 year old truck still in service is a, a testimony to the staff and how they try to take care of the equipment. And that, that to me is kind of remarkable that we're replacing a 37 and a 25 year old dump truck today. So, yeah. head kudos to, to you guys and your staff. Yeah. Well, it's also nice too, and I'm speaking on behalf of all the council and the staff, is that we can just vote on this and talk about it in three minutes. And, and we spent, you know, $265,000 because of the planning we, we've had and, and the savings, and, and it's. I mean, there's some cities would have to get a loan out right. to pay for this, and that's why you know sometimes we hear people say, "Well, you've got a lot of on the, in your fund balance because we can do stuff like this without having to borrow money." And that's, I mean, to, certainly Gail and, and Roger and, and and department heads. Um, I mean, w we get used to being in a good position, right. and, and I think hopefully someday we won't you know we won't fall back where we were. But um, I think overall, just a real good job there. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Finally, I'll defer to Gail. Um, I've posted your sales tax report for you. We were up 4.41%. Uh, County was down about 5% this month, so we're running neck and neck countywide with our sales tax overall. We're up about 12%, which is great because we, uh, we didn't really budget for that level of increase, so that's why we have money for dump trucks. But. <laughs> Um, property tax collections were down a little bit this year compared to last year. Um, I expect to see that in the next month or so <coughs> come back in, come in, but, but we are down just a little bit percentage wise. If you look at your finance report, you'll see that we have a little over $1.6 million in excess revenue over expenditure. I'll just remind you that almost one and a half million of that is the ARP funding that we've already received and not spent out. So, but we're still in the positive, a little over $100,000. So that's really good for this this time of year. So everything looking great. Yeah. Any questions for Gail? Any speculation as to why it dropped so much from the previous month, our sales tax revenues? The one we, last month, if I remember, was a little high. I think it's 17. Last, yeah, I think last, last year there were a couple of months in this time frame that we had some um, redistributions. And I think that was part of it. We, we see that ebb and flow constantly with, with the sales tax. We are seeing now, we, and we have since, I believe it was October or November, we are getting now a distribution from the state for out-of-state sales that they cannot allocate. And so, you know, one month it was 50000 the next month it was 4000 So... Kind of shows the volatility of how that is. 
That was a pretty pretty big month last last year too. Yeah, seventeen seventeen percent increase. Well, I'm just talking about the numbers four twenty three. Oh, yeah. That's a pretty pretty hefty number. And of course that's the December number too. So any other questions? Thanks, Gail. Any questions for Roger? Hey, uh, what about that red light? Oh, no. Mr. Riggs has a meeting set up Wednesday for the traffic engineers. You need anybody to come with you? Sorry. <laughs> what so red that light? Mean it'll be fixed Thursday? Uh, Roger, I'm there in three minutes. You're dealing with two guys. That's the worst red light I've ever encountered. Which one is that? In 54 years Market of the Navy. Market and Main. Well, It's awful. Yeah. It is absolutely awful. Okay. <laughs> Got me, Quinn? Yes. <laughs> okay. Under, I want to. And Roger. According to Bill. I'll take that. David, just call Bill every day <laughs> and get an update. I know you can. <laughs> I know you can. Early. Early. I <laughs> 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 Under ordinances, resolutions, and Roger and Gail, I want to ask you all, um, depending on, on who can talk about these, um, first reading of new ordinances, ordinance number 670. This is amending the CMC Title V, Chapter 6, procurement. You'd like to say something about that? <laughs> it has come to our attention on uh, when I was working on uh, purchasing policies in relation to the federal money that we're getting, that we need to adopt this in regards to competitive sealed proposals. And we do competitive sealed bids, but in order for us to do competitive sealed proposals, so for instance, if we go out not really knowing what we want, and so the vendor proposes to us, and if we do that in a sealed bid capacity, we need to update our model to allow that. It's based on an attorney general opinion in the last year or so, and so we're just complying with that. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Gann? Yes. Councilman McBride? Yes. Councilman Harrell? Councilman Sane? Councilman Hatmaker? Yes. Councilman Fair? Yes. Mayor Burton? Yes, ordinance number 670 passes on first of two readings. Second and final, we have none. Um, resolutions, resolution number 817. This is Public Entity Partners Driver Safety Grant Program. Roger, you want to talk a little bit about that? It's just a small grant. What is it this year? Five? Uh, seven? Four. Four thousand total spending of eight thousand, I think. Small grant program that our risk management insurance offers at the very end. Okay. Motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Gann? Yes. Councilman McBride? Yes. Councilman Harrell? Councilman Sane? Councilman Hatmaker? Yes. Councilman Fair? Yes. Mayor Burton? Yes. Resolution number 817 passes. Resolution number 818, this is supporting restoring the historic revenue sharing relationship between the state of Tennessee and local governments. Gail, you want to do that one? <laughs> um, TML asked us has asked local governments to support this bill. This is their, I guess you could say, main focus in the legislature this, this session. Uh, several years ago, and I'll, it, I think it says in there, 2002 I believe it says, uh, the single article tax, the state uh, basically raised that amount and where in the past the cities shared that amount, the local option part, we get nothing of that. Um, so they did a couple of changes and changed the way they share those taxes. So TML is asking that they go back to the sharing uh, percentage that they had for years and years and years with the cities. Um, so that's their main push this session. Okay. So keep more of that tax local rather than taking it to the state. Yeah, they're, they're basing this on the fact that just like we're seeing our sales tax increase, at the state level, it's doing the same thing. Okay. They have a lot of money flowing right now through the state of Tennessee, and so they felt it was a good time to ask for some of that money back on the local level. Okay. Motion to approve? So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Real quick question. Yeah. Gail, you, are we, you supportive of this measure? Yes, I don't know that we'll get, they'll get anywhere with it, but it'd be great to to get some of that money back to us. So your recommendation is yeah. that it's, yeah, thank you. 
Roll call, please. Councilman Gann? Yes. Councilman Brown? Yes. Councilman Harrell? Councilman Simon? Councilman Hatmaker? Yes. Councilman Farron? Yes. Mayor Brown? Yes. Resolution number 819 passes. Resolution number 820, this is the LWCF grant amendment for the JC pool. Let me skip you skipped 819. Oh, I'm sorry. I already checked that off. Resolution number 819, the CDBG CV Child Care Creation <coughs> Program Funds Grant. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Would you like to talk about that? This is a CDBG grant that we can get 100% no match. $400,000 grant to renovate the um, Old National Guard Army at J.C. Park. Only stipulation is that if we can use it for some type of after-school child care, we're, we're working with the Boys and Girls Club, uh, possibly using that facility uh, during the school year to provide um, possible child care for city employees, families, and also the industrial park. So it's a 100% non-matching grant. Can you talk about the grant? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gann, can you talk about the, yeah. the child care? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Gann? Yes. Councilman McBride? Yes. Councilman Harrell? Councilman Spain? Councilman Hatmaker? Yes. Councilman Farrell? Yes. Mayor Brown? Yes. Resolution number 819 passes. Resolution number 820, this is the LWCF grant amendment for the JC pool. Roger, would you like to speak on that? Yes. Um, if we got the grant awarded six months ago, I guess, back in the fall. Got a phone call from TDEC, a representative of TDEC, a week and a half ago. Uh, this is a Land and Water Conservation Fund grant, which is a federal grant. The state has received several federal dollars, and they have excess money, and they request, or didn't request, they asked if we would like to up our budget on that project from a million to a million and a half. And turning money down, so we just need to pass a resolution to change our budget. Um, you know, with cost of what the equipment and everything going up right now, I think it would be a good thing. I did ask the question, uh, you know, we, we may change a little bit the scope of the project at the pool. We can actually enlarge things, add things, more to it, but if we finish the project, we've only spent a million three, can I do a, an amendment to the grant and actually use it maybe to refurbish the playground up there? And they said, yes, they would let us do that. Great. Any questions for Roger? I'll make a comment there. It's nice that it is a matching grant, right? So we mm -hmm. have to match some of it, mm -hmm. which is fine. But once again, back to your point, there have been times we've had grants and we couldn't afford to match. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it, again, it's a testimony to city staff mm -hmm. that we can come <coughs> along when something like this happens and we can only ante up what they give us, but we can ante up our portion to take yeah. benefit of it. Your motion for approval? So moved. Second. Motion to second. Any further discussion? I hope if we do that, able to do the playground, we can bring some inclusive things in there like we did in South Clinton and uh, make that kind of like that type of same offering for, mm -hmm. for everyone. Mm -hmm. So, um, Roll call, please. Councilman Gann? Yes. Councilman McBride? Yes. Councilman Harrell? Councilman Spain? Councilman Hatmaker? Yes. Councilman Farrell? Yes. Mayor Yes, resolution number 820 passes. Any old business before us? Any new business? Do you want to adjourn the meeting, Archie? Mm -hmm. oh. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>